So this video is a summary of the first section of chapter 5 of Karen Armstrong's book entitled uh, Islam, A Short History. And this is a uh, chapter that's called Islam Agonistis. And uh, in the first section, it's about the arrival of the West from 1750 to 2000. So from 1750 to 2000. Uh, so first of all, what does agonistis mean? And according to Wikipedia, the word agonistis is uh, found as an epithet following a person's name. If it's found in that context, it means the struggler or the combatants. So I guess it means Islam, the strugglers, or Islam, the combatants. I'm not sure uh, what she had in mind here, but I assume struggler is the more appropriate definition. Uh, and so the way that the chapter is structured is it really talks about a number of things. One is how the West ascended, how it became very strong. And then as a result of its strength, it had to expand. That expansion led to colonization. And then it talks specifically about the reactions of various Muslim colonies when they were colonized by the West, both kind of before, during, and after what the Western perceptions were, or rather the perceptions of the West were by people in Islamic colonies and Islamic states. So to begin with, the ascendancy of the West has been fairly unparalleled in human history, and I think the closest analog that's mentioned in the book is that Arab Muslims in the 7th and 8th centuries uh, were quite dominant, but they didn't receive or they didn't achieve the same level of hegemony, hegemony that the actual West did. All right, so they were they were powerful, but not to the extent that the West subsequent to that became very powerful. Now, previously, the West had been a largely agrarian society, and it kind of relied primarily on crops and farming and that sort of thing. All right, now somewhere around the 1600s. Uh, so 1600s, you began to see a lot of scientific progress. And, and I guess this is not too surprising. Think about things like you know, Isaac Newton and, and others. Uh, and so in general, we began to see that uh, folks in the West wanted to kind of understand the natural laws and kind of figure out how they could, they could harbor what was going on. And in many ways, that led to things like uh, improved confidence, improved uh, trade, investment, and reinvestment. Uh, and continuous progress, and really overall, um, the, the improvement of, of commerce in general. And that led to the technicalization of society, which in turn led to the Industrial Revolution in, in the 19th century. So you can think of the Industrial Revolution now as, as a big turning point. And, and really, this is happening over the course of hundreds of years. Um, but this progress is being made uh, towards a more commercial society. And according to uh, Karen Armstrong, she says, and I'm going to read this quote here, the modernization of society involved social and intellectual changes. The watchword was efficiency. An invention or a polity had to be seen to work effectively. An increasing number of people were needed to take part in the various scientific and industrial projects at quite humble levels as printers, clerks, factory workers, and in order to acquire a modicum of the new standards, they had to receive some kind of education. Now, obviously, as the West began to uh, expand, uh, what they had they found was that they, they wanted to obviously increase both consumption and production. And, and to increase consumption, if you have uh, kind of consumption going up, so imagine you've got uh, consumption uh, and it's increasing. What that implies is that now you need uh, more and more people to live at above the subsistence level. So you need, you need kind of uh, population above, population had to be, uh, population above subsistence had to be higher. Population above subsistence. Uh, meaning that you need more people who could consume all these goods and services. All right. And in general, as you had more people who were living above subsistence, you actually had uh, that led to kind of an increase in literacy. So literacy went up. Okay, and as literacy went up, people began to demand a greater share in the decisions of the government. Now, um, as Karen Armstrong wrote, if a nation wanted to use all its human resources to enhance its productivity, it had to bring groups who had hitherto been segregated and marginalized, such as the Jews, into the mainstream culture. Religious differences and spiritual ideals must not be allowed 
to impede the progress of society, and scientists and monarchs and government officials insisted that they be free of ecclesiastical control. Thus the ideals of democracy, pluralism, toleration, human rights, and secularism were not simply beautiful ideals dreamed up by political scientists, but were, at least in part, dictated by the needs of the modern state. And so overall, what started to happen is these industrialized nations obviously began to see a need to expand and get bigger and expand their, their circle of influence and their circle of control and, and so on. And so as a result, they started to colonize. They started to identify places where they could um, take over maybe agrarian agrarian locations, agrarian countries outside of modern Europe, and colonize those countries. So I'm going to stop here. In the next video, I'll talk more specifically about how some of that colonization occurred, and specifically with respect to Islamic countries. And again, I want to emphasize, this is a summary of Karen Armstrong's chapters. So none of these opinions are mine. I'm trying to uh, do a good job of summarizing some of her thoughts on this topic.